Welcome to Jill Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, pretty great stuff. First up, PayPal to earn $2 billion in revenue from its Bitcoin business, says analysts. And the real question then is, well, how much is PayPal actually making over all these years and how much of that is related to cryptocurrency and digital assets? Also, Canadian billionaire on Bitcoin, central banks will try very hard to undermine it. And it's not just this statement that he's talking about. But there's a couple of points that he brings up which have some truth to them, but is also something that you really need to be aware of when people are talking to you about Bitcoin. And I need to answer a question which came in from a subscriber which talked about what can I do as far as setting up a trust to hand down my crypto or digital assets to my kids. So we're going to go over that, but first take a look at what's going on in the markets. So today it is high noon El Paso, Texas time. It is Sunday, January 17th. And what do we got? Well, the same thing we have on almost every single Sunday lately, uh, a little bit of a dip. So uh, if you are a trader, these are the days you live for uh, because it is really going down. Also, coincidentally, this is also days that I live for as a dollar cost averager because I like to get these flash deals. So Bitcoin has been fluctuating, been bobbing up and down between 35 and 40. Today, Sunday, down to 35. That's just how it goes. And that's just the norm, the, the, the uh, normalcy of what is uh, crypto and digital asset market. So Bitcoin 35.7, down 3%. All right. Ethereum 12.27, down 0.4. Not too much. Tether's Tether. Eh, whatever. Polka dots. Polka dot, amazing run. Amazing run, 71% for the week. So it goes down 3%. Sure, that's healthy. I'll take that. No big deal. Uh, XRP is almost peg of the quarter. Watch out. Uh, Cardano 10% up, which is pretty good. Almost at 38 cents. My prediction for Cardano this year is up to $3 uh, at the end of this bull run. Maybe five, but uh, that's kind of pushing it. But three, I can definitely see. Litecoin down, Bitcoin Cash, everything's down. Chainlink, wow, $22. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Chainlink holders. You're crushing it. 24% uh, for the week. Can't beat those numbers. Binance Coin up 4.8%. If you like Binance Coin because it has a great utility, it is the uh, official coin for the exchange Binance, take a look at Voyager. That's my big top tip uh, pick for 2021. Uh, when I started it, it was like 29 cents when I did my uh, price prediction. Now it's up over a dollar and uh, I think it's going to go uh, much higher. I have a prediction of $30 this year and people think I'm crazy, but <laughs> we'll see. So uh, what else we got? Ave up 3.6 on a tear, absolute tear. Fantastic. Synthetics Network. Uh, we do uh, what's called Trinity Trading and uh, we actually didn't hit our goal for synthetics. I was going to think it's going to go up to 18, actually only, only went up to 17, so it was like 10%, 15% gains, which, okay, not too bad, but just not what we are used to over at Trinity Trading and uh, one of those things. And what else? 5.5 or Uniswap, hey, it's pretty good, 2.7, VeChain down, so it just kind of going back and forth. But let's take a look at what we would do if we just invest in a Bitcoin, because that's the whole thing. Why not just invest in Bitcoin? Well, in all actuality, you'd be up 2% if you invested in, in Ethereum. You'd be up 1% uh, on XRP. Watch out. <laughs> Cardano, 3-2%. Actually, everything is in the green. So for all the Bitcoin maximalists out there, they're like, you know, it's, it's Bitcoin or nothing. It's Bitcoin. It's, it's not. It's not Bitcoin or nothing. Uh, there's a good analogy over there at uh, uh, Blockchain Bulls. Check out that uh, that channel. I have it listed in my uh, description. And uh, this was actually Jeff from Altcoin Buzz. He now does uh, uh, Blockchain Bulls. And he said, look, sometimes you need a pickup truck uh, because you got to move stuff. Sometimes you want a Ferrari because you want to get somewhere real fast and in and, uh, and, and style. And sometimes you just want a Honda Civic because you got to get to and, to and fro from work. So that is how I see crypto and digital assets. I mean, there's every different thing for every different type of uh, uh, prospect that you can do. It's it's not going to be one for everything, but uh, it's not just Bitcoin or nothing. That's just stupid. Anyhow, that's what's going on in the market. So uh, let's just jump into today's top story, huh? So first up, this was good. I am a big uh, fan of uh, PayPal getting into our markets and uh, really boosting things up, considering the fact that they, at one point they were buying like 70, 80% of all the Bitcoin every single day. So hey, hats off to those guys. So what's going on here? Well, PayPal to earn $2 billion in revenue from its Bitcoin business, says analysts. This is uh, Izu Securities Analyst Don Dolev has forecast that PayPal will earn up to $2 billion in revenue from its Bitcoin business. Now here's a catch, by 2023. Uh, this year, he expects that the payments giant overall revenue will climb 20%. So in my opinion, I was like, well, how much does PayPal make every year? And what's their revenue? Is it like, you know, 100 billion, 30 billion? I have no idea. So I just took a look at uh, Statista, nice little premium website, and they break it all down for you. Pretty nice, right? So uh, 2010, 2 
3 billion, 4.5 billion, blah, blah, blah. So it looks like every year they kind of increase by about 1 or 2 billion. So good for those guys, right? So 2019, they're at uh, almost 18 billion, right? So let's just say 2020, they're going to hit 20 billion. 2021, 22 billion. 2022, 20, you know, 5 billion, so on and so forth, 27 billion, 23. So if we take a look at those numbers, um, and 2 billion is revenue from crypto and digital assets, I mean, that's between 5 and 10%. So if you're a company and you're looking at PayPal going, what did they do differently? Well, they just added one thing. They added one thing. Well, actually four things. They added Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and uh, Litecoin. But they added cryptocurrency, a brand new asset class that is crushing it. Bitcoin is the top performing asset uh, of the last decade. So they're looking at like, what could we do? What could we add? Well, PayPal did that. Worked out pretty well. Also, Square did the same thing. And they uh, their revenue generated a ton. And you know who likes to see that? Stockholders. And that's who... All these big businesses are beholden to. So if you're a big business, you're like, shoo, I should do that. If you're also a big uh, corporation, you take a look at like, hey, where can we put our money so it doesn't go on fire? Same thing that MicroStrategy did. We're going to put into Bitcoin. So I think as time goes on, the things that we've uh, covered in this channel over and over and over again, businesses, big corporations, they're all going to get in the game. That's just how it is. But this just reiterates what we already know. PayPal announced in October. In October, that its 346 million active users will now be able to buy, hold, and sell Bitcoin and other digital assets using their PayPal accounts. I got to tell you one thing. Um, I sell things on online. Uh, I have a couple of different businesses for that. I really wish that I could keep the crypto that uh, all these different PayPal users think they're going to spend. They're not spending crypto. They're spending fiat. So all that PayPal is doing is like, oh, you want to sell? You want to buy that in Bitcoin? No problem. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to set it up where it's going to be Bitcoin to fiat. And then we're going to pay these uh, distributors or the people that are actually online, the uh, merchants, we'll pay them a fiat, but we're going to keep that Bitcoin because they know what's going to happen. And that's just how it's going to go. And then people are like, wow, crypto is so fast when I use it. It's so great. It's not fast. Bitcoin's not fast. Bitcoin is slow as heck. So what, what the PayPal is doing, everything behind the scenes is not the reality. And that's what people are going to believe it actually is. And that's fine with me. Uh, the only thing is, is that as time goes on, People are going to start to think that, oh, this is just, it's just a norm. And when they go to another wallet, like, why is this wallet so slow? We don't understand. It's PayPal behind the scenes manipulating types of things. And that's just how it is. So anyhow, a little rant there. Dolev, yeah, Dolev, uh, the analyst, raised his target price for the PayPal stock to 350 from 290 uh, Over the past 52 weeks, the shares have reached a high of 249 and a low of $82. So again, if um, if you're a big corporation, you are beholden to stockholders, and your whole job as a CEO is to make sure these stockholders are happy, well, they are going to be very, very happy, especially with what this analyst predicts. But of course, it's going to go up because, I mean, look, they're going to make $20 billion in just a couple of years, so good for them. Anyhow, that is what is going on with uh, PayPal. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Is this good for crypto? Is this bad? Let's move on. Next up, Canadian billionaire on Bitcoin. Central banks will try very hard to undermine it. Well, that's a no-brainer. But uh, it's not just what he says here, but it's what he really gets into the weeds. This guy really knows uh, crypto, I think. I think he's got a good grasp on it, but he's just off on a couple of things. We'll talk about it. So this was, uh, he was on, oh, he was on, uh, yeah, Stansbury Research, uh, Daniello over there on the YouTube channel. So he was on there and he says, this is exactly what he says. He goes, I just think that people should stop arguing about this. Make your choice. Buy one or the other and shut up. I don't envy you having to referee between Schiff and Kaiser. These are two are just going at it and it's getting pretty ugly. It's not that ugly. I mean, really, it's just one guy who has no idea what he's talking about. And other guy is extremely entertaining named Max Kaiser. He says, I have uh, my own opinions about Bitcoin, but that doesn't, uh, that doesn't make them gospel. I don't have a crystal ball. Neither do I. Nobody else does. That's very true. I just have opinions that are based on my understanding of what is happening out there, what's driving gold, what's driving Bitcoin. And so I think, yeah, Bitcoin can go a lot higher in the short and near term. Will it replace gold? I don't think so for a lot of reasons. So again, I own gold. I own silver. I own Bitcoin. And I own all three for different reasons. Uh, I do truly believe that Bitcoin is a, a superior store of value as time is moving forward. The only difference and the only advantage Bitcoin has, I mean, excuse me, gold has is time. 
Gold has been around for a lot longer than Bitcoin, but as time goes on, and this is what uh, this gentleman is talking about. He's like, well, you don't really know because, you know, it's just unproven. But once you get to the point where it's actually proven, it's too late. I mean, it's too late. Are you going to buy into Bitcoin at a million dollars? I mean, seriously, no one's going to do that. I mean, they're... In the future, people aren't going to talk about one Bitcoin. They're going to talk about how many Satoshis do you have? Because nobody in their right minds are like, oh, I just got, a, I got like 15 million to, to spend on one Bitcoin. Pfft, it's not going to happen. So anyhow, that's exactly what he said. He, he goes, gold has 3,000 years of history. And until it reaches near universal adoption like gold has, you're speculating. You're gosh darn right we are. And we're going to make a lot of money doing it. Not financial advice. That's just uh, <laughs> what I'm doing. Until it does, you're playing the greater fool game. And you're going to hear this a lot uh, as time goes on. So just get ready for it right now. And that's why I, 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 I say a couple things. One is always get your uh yeah, your Bitcoin elevator pitch ready, which is the simplest thing that you can possibly say about Bitcoin, which is this. Bitcoin is digital gold. It's scarce. Really, it's finite. Just say finite, but uh, scarce is fine. And it's market insurance. Unlike gold, you can send it to anyone, anywhere, within minutes for pretty much nothing. It's the best performing asset class ever, better than gold, oil, or any stock ever. And if you just want to say 10 years, go with that. It used to be worth a nickel, now it's worth 10K. <laughs> See, this is how long ago it's been. It used to be worth a nickel, now it's worth 40K. And it's why I'm heavily invested. This is the simplest way to say things instead of going into like, well, here's the aspects of money and here's what's going on. You can have those deeper conversations with people who like are uh, really into it, but this is the easiest way that I could figure out to, to really talk to people and make it so simple so that's that's one thing you're going to talk about and then another thing is you're going to hear this the greater fool game the greater fool game is essentially people are going to sell you this product because you're a greater fool and they sold it uh more to you than what they bought it but isn't that every investment out there every stock that, that, that you get invested in every type of crazy thing that, that you have or just simple things it's really comes down to is uh, what you bought it for. You're trying to sell it to somebody else for a higher price. <laughs> That's really the whole thing. Now, the greater fool, gotcha, okay. But really, to to me, in, in my whole opinion, it's not about the, the, the greater fool, but it's what value you are bringing to the table. And again, that's why we always use a Bitcoin elevator pitch because it tells them about value and why you invested into it and just leave it at that. He does state, uh, I think it's going to do what some of these people are predicting. If I had a choice of where to store my wealth, it's going to be gold. If I want to make money because I think something's going higher, I'll buy Bitcoin. And that's a great point. In all honesty, you have to step back and don't be like the Mac list, like, oh no, it's Bitcoin or nothing. And you got to just, just, just take it and ram down your throat. That's not how, what, how it is. This is a good point because, so let's say like this. So it's 2017. Okay. And you want to do a store, use it as a store of value. And you put all your money in at 19,900. Well, if you had done that in a couple of weeks, it would have crashed down to 10,000. And a couple of weeks after that, it had been like 6,000. So uh, you would have lost your store of value. Now you could have waited three years and then, of course, it would have gone up and you would have been really good and you would have been at 40,000. Congratulations. But for three years, it really wasn't a great story of value. Now, was it? So when he talks about here is like, hey, if I wanted to go up, then yes, I will buy Bitcoin. And that's why we're always talking about these four year cycles. So it is a good store of value if you can keep it in there for a little bit of time. And then people will always talk about, well, if you're you know running from a third world country, it's way better than you know putting it into you know the Venezuelan dollar, whatever the heck that was. Uh, then yes, you are right. You would still have a good store of value because that stuff just went to, you know, it just collapsed. So yes, I understand your point. But as far as the store of value, the thing you have to realize is that I personally believe that if you just keep your money into it, it will actually grow, but it's going to take a long time. It's not like a store of value like everything that you might think, such as gold. Now, here's the thing about gold. Gold also goes down. It's not like it stays at $2,000 and it's set at that at all time. It's not how it works. It's gone down to 17, 1600, and uh, it actually is a fluctuation, just that Bitcoin fluctuates more. However, it fluctuates to the upside uh, a heck of a lot more than gold, and that's why I invested into it. So just keep that in mind. All right, so he states, finally, uh, central banks own gold. They don't own Bitcoin, and their gold is a core part of their currency reserves and always will be. And if they do anything, they will issue their own digital currency, 
which is the CBDCs, they're not gonna buy be buying Bitcoin because they're going to try with all their power to undermine Bitcoin. And it's a good point because uh, if you take a look at what is going on, this is uh, from the IMF, Christine Lagarde, she wants global re regulation of Bitcoin. And this was at, uh, this is just a four days ago, during her speech at the Reuters uh, conference, Lagarde said that Bitcoin has conducted some funny business in the past, including its use in illegal activities. She asked for a comprehensive global regulation to cover the loopholes in Bitcoin. She's sure that's what you want to do. Um, so there's a big difference between asking for regulation and totally shutting it down. There will be varying responses in the comments section. So go ahead and put that down there. Uh, and then the last thing is that this people are going to say, well, aren't central banks, aren't the uh, Federal Reserves, aren't they buying Bitcoin? If you can point me to an actual article or some proof that actually says it and not some kind of made up Riddler junk, then I'll take a look at it. But as far as I know, and correct me in the comment section, central banks, federal reserves are not buying Bitcoin that we know about. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our last piece. So last up, this was a pretty good comment uh, from a subscriber. He sent this to my email and he says, talks about, hey, you know, uh, how can I set up a, a trust or a trust fund for all my kids? And uh, it's a good question. And I had to actually reach out to uh, Anthony and he answered it for me. So let's just jump into uh, the office real quick and let me answer this face to face. All right, so welcome back. So uh, I thought this is a pretty good question to, to answer, especially when it has to do with, with kids and grandkids and what you're gonna do as far as like trust and things like that. So let me just blow this up real quick. So uh, the question actually became is, uh, uh, Dan, do you know where a good place would be to set up a trust fund? Hmm. A friend of mine just became a grandfather and he would like to start a digital asset trust fund. Thoughts and ideas, maybe this would be a good idea for a, a video. Abs absolutely. So I reached out to, uh, to Anthony over there at uh, iTrust because, uh, you know, just want to see what, if they have an offer that service. I said, hey man, I got a couple of messages like this. Uh, do you have any plans to offer this or have a trusted partner that could provide this service? And Anthony got back to me and he said, look, he goes, uh, trust are complex animals and there's no one size fits all. So a personal one on lawyer uh, consult should almost always be used. I'm going to say always should be used just to be, uh, you know, 100% transparent. This is not financial advice. I'm not telling you exactly what to do, but this is just one of those options that could be out there. He says, one thing to keep in mind is a Roth IRA can be passed down to beneficiaries upon death. The, recept the receiver receives the funds and can, can, and can cash out completely tax free. Unlike traditional IRAs, which require a uh, minimum distribution after 70 Roth IRAs are not required. People can literally use a Roth IRA to simply stuff money in, even if they themselves never plan to sell, but just want to pass it down. They are almost uh, like a trust fund in spirit, in that sort of way. So yeah, I mean, in that sort of way, that's true. So this got me curious. So I sent him a message. I go, well, hey, because like with IRAs, like we have to wait usually till 59 and a half years old to actually cash out or else we get penalized. Is that the case for beneficiaries? He said, no. Once it gets passed down to your beneficiary, they can cash out whenever they want to. Now, in certain states or certain laws, uh, certain regulations, where if you pass it down, uh, they have to you know, cash it out within 10 years. Uh, again, you, you have to check, check with your lawyers. And actually, I would check with, with iTrust. So I thought this was a pretty great option. Now, there's a, there's a plethora of options out there for you of how to pass things down. But uh, this is just one of those options where you can pass it down to your kids, your grandkids, uh, your significant other, your partner, whatever else. Uh, in a just a cleaner way without having to pay in so many taxes that are out there. So again, if you were smart or you were ballsy and you're like, hey, in March, what I want to do is I'm going to buy Bitcoin and uh, I'm going to get it at $5,000 and then it went all the way to $40,000. What, what do you think is going to happen in 10 years, 20 years? Do you think Bitcoin can go up to a million? Well, it depends on who you, who you listen to. So if it goes all the way up to a million dollars, well, guess how much you have to pay taxes on? Yeah, a boatload. So, and especially if you, you know, pass it on down. So this is just one of those things. So I would just say like this, uh, as far as like uh, the IRA, there's two more things to, to pay attention to. Uh, first of all, if you have a traditional IRA, or, and I always say this, or an old employer plan, 401B, a military TSB, or a 457, then you can pass it over tax and penalty free from a traditional IRA to a cryptocurrency IRA with iTrust. Also, uh, they have just announced that they are going to start setting up the process for Ethereum staking. So if you have Ethereum and you have that in your crypto IRA and you get staking rewards, well, guess what? You're not going to pay any uh, taxes on that because it is in an, an IRA. So that is just one of those things to definitely look, look to. If you want to learn more, uh, in the description of every one of my videos, there's going to be a link and it's going to look like this. 
it's gonna see uh, why a crypto IRA. You're gonna click on that, it's a 23 minute video and I go over all the different types of IRAs and the different options. What I did was I went right, I just, well, first of all, there's a link right here, you can get one free month for all the banned users. So when you click on that, you can sign up. But what I recommend is that you set up a consult with these guys just to make sure this is something right for you. It's totally free, this is what I did. I set it up, like it was like a 30 minute session, but it could take, 10 minutes, 15, just depends on whatever you want to do. So then you go there, you talk to them and then uh, go that route. But I thought, I didn't know this was actually an option for, for beneficiaries. So if uh, if this would be something that you would be interested in, I just give you the option and then go from there. Again, not financial advice, of course, do whatever you want to do. So uh, that is it. So uh, thanks for uh, watching uh, all the way to the end, I appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, there's gonna be two more gonna pop up on your left and right, let YouTube do its magic. And that is all for today. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the next one.